Hey guys, Joel from Jones Auto Club, and today we're going to show you how to tear down your Cummins diesel engine 6BT uh, for part three of our K2500 Suburban Cummins diesel engine swap. So as you can see, we've already started it, so I'm going to get you caught up right now. Please subscribe to the channel and ask your questions in the comments. Hi there, Joel from Jonesy's, and uh, today we're going to be digging into our Cummins 6BT 12 valve 5.9 liter turbo diesel um, to get it freshened up for our navy blue suburban. So, uh, where do you start? Well, we started by ripping it out of the uh, donor vehicle, which was a 92 uh, Dodge uh, 250 pickup truck, two wheel drive. The remainder of that Dodge truck has been um, scrapped. So, we've got We've got all of the grid heat still hooked up. We've got some hoses hooked up. So what we're going to do is uh, we have cleaned off a bunch of uh, bench space all around me and we're just going to take piece by piece, item by item, and uh, disassemble it. So first things first, we're going to get this fan out of our way, get the serpentine belt off, and then we're going to take some of the big pieces off. We're going to take the exhaust manifold off, the alternator, kind of work on one side, um, and then go to the other side. So we're going to get this stuff cleared, and then we'll do the pump um, last. So I'm gonna get some tools and we'll get going. Here it is, moment of truth. Got the cylinder head pulled off. So now I always go to the rear cylinder first because it is the last one to get oil. And so if there's any kind of heat problems or oil problems, you'll see it on this cylinder. And doesn't look like we have any issues. So I mean the, the cylinder walls are pretty pretty darn shiny, which uh, is pretty typical. Um, and hopefully you guys can still see, we can still see some of the, the crosshatch pattern in the cylinder wall, so that's great. So what we're gonna do next is inspect every single one of them. And that uh, moisture you see on the top of the piston is uh, from the solvent, the penetrating solvent I put in um, with the injectors to help get those loosened up and removed. So we're gonna kind of investigate these cylinders a little bit more. Get get that carbon ring removed off of there and um, take a look and see what other thing looks like. Looks like you can see a little bit of surface rust on this cylinder wall here some looks like some pitting from uh, it's sitting for quite some time but you can still see the crosshatch pattern on the cylinder wall so I think these are gonna gonna clean up and not necessarily need to be bored but again we'll uh, dig down a little bit deeper take the pistons out and then uh, see how well that cylinder wall cleans up. So we're going to, next step is going to be to 
pull that gasket off and we'll uh, start to uh, dissect the front. Take a look at the uh, killer dowel pin, make sure that's not coming out. Get the uh, timing indexed on the uh, pump as well on the cam, so we'll document all that and uh, go from there. So you can see right down here on the crank we've got zero between those two marks. And then up here, let's get it to focus. We've got it right at the E mark. Now, to double check that, right there is a little plunger that will come out right up in there and stick into the cam gear to verify that you are in fact on top dead center. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try and get this. A lot of times they'll be stuck. See there, got it kind of freed up. We can safely remove the pump. So in order to remove the pump now we need to lock it in position. And in order to lock the VE pump in position, we're going to take that little tab right there, take that bolt off, slide that tab over, take that tab out, and then that will actually lock the shaft on the pump so we won't lose our pump timing when we take it off. So we're ready to pull the pistons, and I wanted to uh, just talk about. Uh, uh, kind of where we're at. So I uh, ended up uh, clearing a bunch of bench space. I put a bunch of uh, the miscellaneous parts that I knew I wasn't going to be using uh, down under the bench. I've got uh, all of uh, my drivetrain parts uh, specifically organized uh, by, by cylinder number. So that's all the rocker assembly push rods for cylinder number one. And I'm going to consequently put the uh, rod caps for each uh, cylinder on that cardboard box as well. So if you come back over here to the engine, what you'll notice on this particular model, there we go, is you can see 44425, and that also corresponds to the rod itself. So the cap and the rod are all numbered correctly. So um, you can also notice the orientation. They're all facing over here to my left. Um, which would actually be pointed to the driver's side, but this is upside down. So all of the pistons are uh, facing over towards one direction, so you uh, know that uh, when it goes back together, you uh, have to orient them in the correct way. So I'll go ahead and take this cap off. We'll talk a little bit about... So you can see there's there's no number stamped on that side. So numbers go to numbers then we'll go ahead and put this cap right there for number one and we'll talk about the crank service and how to inspect the crank so first of all you want to obviously look and see if there's any known um, obvious nicks there aren't any right now and then I always take my fingernail and run my fingernail across the surface and if I feel any kind of if it hangs up on anything if that's not totally smooth and you really uh, should consider having the crankshaft uh, at least bare minimum polished. So we're not uh, overly concerned about um, the crank right now. We're going to uh, do a good inspection, make sure that it uh, doesn't uh, <coughs> need to be turned. I'll flip this over. And you can see those bearings uh, do have some uh, signs of, of some discoloration and some wear. Um, so we're definitely going to be putting some new bearings, new rings. We'll uh, try and get everything cleaned up. So I'm going to go ahead and blast the uh, main bearing caps off. I'll take all the pistons out and we'll get this crank uh, removed. Okay, guys.
guys got all the uh, main bearing caps uh, removed. You don't uh, have to worry about marking those because they uh, are marked right there. You can see that number one. So they already are stamped. Now it's time to pull the crank. Now this is uh, best if you have if you have two people, but I don't have that luxury. So one trick is to take a uh, strap around one end, a strap around the other end. Just like so. That way you can uh, hold it and then just use a soft strap and then make sure that you have a, uh, a place where you're going to take this um, so that you're not banging it around. The, it's very critical at this point to uh, try to be as careful with this uh, crank as you can because you don't want to nick it and then have to uh, get it lifted up and out. Now is a really good time to inspect all these uh, bearing surfaces. So I'll just wipe them off and they look so far the ones that didn't stick to the crank look excellent. Now the uh, rod bearings they actually are showing some signs of wear which is not uncommon you can see kind of right in there. And that is clear where the wear is uh, lines directly up with the uh, with the rod. So we've got everything laid out in order. Got the uh, crank set over here. So we'll uh, get that run through the parts washer and uh, make sure that all of the surfaces look really good, which as uh, first impression they all look really nice. Camshaft over here also shows almost no signs of wear at all. You can kind of see maybe a tiny little bit on that low, but it's more of a discoloration than anything else. So all of our internal parts are looking really, really good. And that's uh, what, I, what I had expected uh, because this engine actually ran really, really well. Now, some things you're going to want to look for is you see that little, see that little piece right there? That's the oil squirter. You want to make sure that all of those are intact and are in the correct spot. Otherwise, your pistons won't oil correctly. So we'll uh, continue cleaning up all of our individual pieces. Some of our parts into the out of the dishwasher and uh, get moving on to uh, cleaning up this uh, engine block and getting those uh, cylinder walls cleaned up. So that's next. Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, break up the glaze on uh, these uh, cylinders here. I use uh, just a generic, um, <clears throat> I call it a dingleberry hone, but it's just a little ball hone. And uh, just use some generic uh, automatic transmission fluid for kind of a cutting oil. So put that all over there. sure you got quite a bit on there and then you want to always keep it moving and not go too deep so decided to rain on us as you can see so let's uh, check it out and see how well how well our cylinders cleaned up well as you can see they cleaned up very nicely it's a good quality cross hatch right around there 
knock the carbon build up up at the top. I can feel no, there's just a very, very slight, uh, I wouldn't even call it a ridge, you can kind of see where that line, I can feel that line right there where the actual piston ring stops, but in terms of a crosshatch pattern and a nice surface for the new rings to seat and wear into, I'm, uh, I'm very happy. So I'm going to go through and verify that all of them look this good. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the, the crosshatch pattern, but um, if the cylinder wall itself is scored or has any vertical lines, then you probably should just have it bored. But as you can see, all the way around, ours uh, look pretty darn good. So, just with that little, uh, little bit of hone, all you're trying to do is break up the glaze um, on those cylinders so that uh, you have some nice uh, new fresh material for the new rings to uh, wear into and to seat on. So we'll uh, go ahead and get the rest of this block uh, cleaned up, scraped, and into the uh, parts washer.